we're back again. I guess actually one thing we should mention, Ray, is that if you're getting value out of these videos, subscribe because we're posting every day, every other day. Uh, we've got all sorts of good content. And you've got how many years of experience in the car business? Mm -hmm. 43, I think, 43. Every day it gets a little bit, uh, you know, at a day, at a, at a week, at a month. Well, you know, eventually the days add up into a year. And uh, if I started in in April of 1977. Yeah, you're up to 43. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm entering my 44th year yep. in the car business. And I've, I've completed my 43rd. There you go. So if you're interested in learning more about how dealerships work, the trials and tribulations Ray and I go through working for our customers, uh, subscribe. We're posting new content on a pretty frequent basis. All right. So with all that being said, Ray, one of the things that uh, we want to talk about here today is how we're actually sourcing information from dealers and why the hell is it so hard to just get a price? So what I was thinking we could do is we could talk about your experience when you were back in the dealership. And what happens when someone sends in an internet lead or they make a phone call? Because right now, during coronavirus, you can't just walk into a dealership. And what the process is like to actually get, you know, an out the door, that's, that's the lingo, the, the out the door price. Like what the heck are the steps and why is it so difficult? Because car dealers don't want to share. You know, dealers will tell you if you go to their website, you know, they support a lot of local charities. You know, they give to charities. What they don't give is information to customers. <clears throat> That's foreign to them, okay? Because dealers feel that if they give you the information, well, you won't need them anymore. But, but you do need them because you have the car that they want to buy. And isn't it like, isn't it perpetuated? I feel like when I talk to dealers on behalf of our customers, they're afraid to give me a price because then I'm going to go shopping with other dealers, which I am. Well... Okay because you're not even engaging with me give me what I need. <clears throat> yes, dealers are afraid that if they give you their bottom line out the door price, that you will get in contact with another dealer that has the exact same car and you will share that information with the other dealer, which is when I, I know when I contact the dealers, I let them know that I'm going to be shopping other dealers in their area so that please give me your best out the door price so that I can share that with my client. And, and you know, most dealers are afraid. They're, they're afraid because they want to have control. And what's going on today um, is causing dealers to not have control because the customers can't come into the showrooms. So you can't keep the customer tied up in your showroom for hours by telling him, well, let me go get my manager and have your manager come out and talk to him and then have your manager go back to his office to check on what he can do and have the process take two, three, four hours. So dealers are trying to confront the reality that they have to give up what they perceive as their control. But I got to tell you, Ray, I mean, I, so I was on the phones, I was working the phones yesterday and it's Toyota to specifically uh -huh. that I'm looking for for a customer. And, uh, you know, I fill out all the different internet leads for the, the particular vehicles that, that meet our needs. And, uh, and I get a phone call and it's from, you know, Jane Doe and she's potentially like the, the internet outreach person, but a lot of dealerships are short staffed right now. And yeah. she's you know, just confirming you want information on this one. Can you come into the dealership? I explain I'm not going to be coming into the dealership. Coronavirus it might be not in my location, et cetera. She says, great. I'll talk to my manager. Okay kind of concerned and confused. Why did you even give me a phone call? But thank you for the outreach. I guess I appreciate it. And then you get another phone call 20 minutes later. It's the same person. And it's like, well, what's your zip code? So I can get you the proper price. And then it goes back to them. You end up playing, you know, you say when you go into the dealership, it's a three, four, five hour process of, of games being played. I'm experiencing the same thing still. And I'm getting phone calls left and right. And, and then the manager doesn't actually know what's going on when they eventually call me. It's like, oh, you were interested in this card? No, no, no. Well, do you have the stock number on you? I mean, I filled out a form. Don't you have the information? Very frustrating. It makes you want to pull your hair out. Uh, I am convinced that dealerships are staffed by uh, wannabe dentists. And so it's like trying to pull teeth. <laughs> it's just that simple. They, the dealer personnel are trained by the managers 
that if you have an internet lead or a phone lead, that all you want to get out of whatever conversation you have with that lead is to get an appointment to get them into the dealership. That's all you're trying to accomplish. So if you ask a specific question and you're expecting a specific answer, you're going to be disappointed because the answer from the dealership's going to be, when can you get here? Yeah. Yes. So, so the reality of the situation is that those people that work in the, in the dealership only see the things through their eyes. They only see what it is that they're trying to accomplish. They don't really give a shit about what it is that the customer is trying to accomplish. Um, one of the trials and tribulations I used to have when I managed dealerships, and I would review some of um, the responses that my salespeople would give to a, to a customer who sent in an internet lead and asked a specific question. And nowhere in the response was even anything remotely approaching an answer to that specific question. I used to say this, if, if somebody asks you a question, your obligation, if you'd like to eventually sell them a car, is answer it. Yep. They're asking for, for specific information. Answer it. Don't dance around it. Answer it. Show that you, show that you care enough about them to be, able, to be able to provide them with the information that they've asked for so that you can provide them with the service that they're entitled to. Yeah. But, but we have spent, we being the, the people in the car business, have spent a lifetime convincing their sales staff that the only thing you want is an appointment. Yep. That's all you want. Well, in today's world, the appointment is not a real appointment. The appointment is to be able to agree to a price online or via email or via a phone conversation and, and so that the customer can then say yes and buy the car. So, so uh, let's actually talk about that, right? Because what we do now with your auto advocate, I mean, is it's not clear, it's a, it's a car buying service. It's a concierge service. Our clients come to us and we, we do all the dealership negotiating for them. And ultimately, you know, they, they sign the final paperwork, but we, we handle that whole process. So I'm, I'm bitching and moaning about my frustrations, but ultimately we do get around it. We do get to the place that we need to be. It does take work, it does take time. So let's talk about some of those tactics. Like, for example, when you were training me up uh, to service our customers, I had no clue what out the door price meant, but that seems to be the exact phrase you need to use when you're engaging with dealers. However, you need to understand what that actually means. Because even yesterday, I'm getting all sorts of emails and PDFs and attachments from the dealer. They still never actually sent me the final out the door price, the out the door price with the, you know, the local and, and state uh, taxes or the dock fees or other miscellaneous fees that they're attaching um, to, the, to the price of the vehicle. So maybe can you talk a little bit about some of the lingo and language that we use in our work to actually cut through the bullshit, make, make it clear that we need an actual, here's what we're going to cut the check for price uh, and go about doing our business. Well, there, there's two ways that dealers refer to it. Either the out the door price, OTD, or the on the road price, OTR. Okay. And both are exactly the same. What, what we're trying to gather from the dealers when we deal with them is what's, what's, what's the total price of the car, including dock fees, state taxes, registration fees, and any other miscellaneous fees that we would have or the customer would have to write the check for. Let's assume for a moment that nobody's financing anything. We just need to write a check. What's the total amount of the check, including all fees? So I, I looked at one of the one of the PDFs that you got yesterday, <clears throat> and you thought it was the out the door price, and what it was was a discounted price. They showed you what the MSRP was. They showed you the size of the discount, which was forty eight hundred and some dollars, and they showed you what the selling price was. But you had no idea what the sales taxes were, what the dock fees might have been, what the registration fees might have been. You had no idea what the out the door price was. Then you sent me one from another dealer and, and they showed the out the door price 
which was very nice of them. And they also showed a $799 dock fee. Now I can tell you in the 43 years that I've done this, I've never charged a dock fee higher than $399 because, well, hell, I thought that was excessive. Okay. And, and a dock fee is a, is a fee the way I used to describe it to customers when they would ask me. It's a fee the dealership charges to help defray the expenses of our non-revenue producing employees, accountants, title clerks, people such as that, receptionists. They don't make us any money. They're not bringing in any money. So that's what the dock fee is. But what the dock fee really is, it's a profit center for the dealer. Think about this for just a second. The dealer in Atlanta that had the $799 dock fee, let's just say, for example, that they sell a thousand cars a year and they charge a $799 and $99 dock fee per car. What does that add up to, Zach? Well, and, and just so you know, Ray, I was talking to the used car manager last night, so we're here yeah. still. They had a 40 car day yesterday. Wow. A 40 car day amidst coronavirus and all. So just yeah. like that, even just yeah. 40 cars at an $800 dock fee. And dock stands for documentary, in case anyone. Yes. And then, so that's, I can't do the math, but 40 cars at $800 a car is no more than $32,000. Okay, and that's profit that, that the dealer gets. The salesperson doesn't get paid off of it. The sales managers don't get paid off of it. Okay, that's just, that's that's, just profit for the dealer. That's actually one thing then for our audience to be clear on is when you, so, so communicate, if you're, if you're really genuinely interested in buying a car, communicate that you want the out the door or the on the road price. Yes. When you see now, How much do I have to write the check for? When you see that and you see the dock fees, which are different in every single state and different yeah. in every single dealership, what you want to do is then negotiate to get rid of that fee. Now, the thing is, what you've explained to me, Ray, and then if you do your research online, it's, it's crystal clear. The dealership can't, by law, remove the dock fee. If they remove the dock fee from your invoice, then they need to do it for every other invoice, and they're they're setting themselves up for a lawsuit. It's considered discriminatory if they if they waive it for some and not for others. Exactly. So when you're negotiating your car deal, even if it's via email or you get on the telephone, all you say is, "Let's get rid of that dock fee." And I understand it's going to take off the gross. I understand you, Mr. Manager, get paid off the gross. I'm sorry about that, but but this is you know, I, eight hundred dollars just going to you to pay for overhead. Uh, I don't really feel comfortable with that. Can you discount that from the sale price? And you know what's going to happen? They're probably going to say no. They'll play a little bit of hardball. Eventually, they'll get them to say yes because they want the car. So that's one area where you can negotiate. It's still on the out the door price sheet or on the sheet that they send to you. It's still going to show, in my case, a seven hundred and ninety nine dollar dock. It, it will always show on the buyer's order or the sales contract because they have to show that they've charged it to everyone. But then the sales price, in my case, is reduced by the equal amount. Exactly. So, so when 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 you're trying to get to that point of the deal, when you're trying to actually get to what do I need to stroke a check for, even if you're still going to finance it, these are the, the, the lingo and the terms to be looking out for. You know, if, if you just, if you call and you've probably dealt with this, what happens when you get an internet lead or you get a phone call and they say, well, what's the best monthly payment you can give me? I mean, you know, you're kind of not dealing with someone that understands the intricacies of the business, right? Well, when I would get somebody that would call and want to know what the best monthly payment is, I, I mean, I, I, maybe, I, maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm somewhat different than most people in the car business. Yes, I'm, I, I, I was good at playing what customers refer to as the game. I understood the game. I, I didn't invent the game, but I learned how to play the game early on. But I also understood that, that I had an obligation to try and be as honest, transparent, and as upfront with people as I could be. And, and so when somebody would say, what's the best monthly payment? I would always explain to them that, that monthly payments, interest rates, are tied to credit score. It's all based on your past credit history. Now, I can quote you the best possible scenario. And if you don't qualify for that, don't get mad at me, okay? 
You know what your credit is. I don't. So if you tell me you're elite or super elite, something like that, and I quote you that rate, and it turns out that, I don't know, your standard, well, you're not going to qualify for the best rate. And, and it's important that we mention we've got a whole video where you explain the different ways. I mean, I think it's also on our website, youratoadvocate.com, a guide that talks about the different credit scores, because it's not just your traditional FICO score. There's, there's automotive specific credit scores. That deal yeah. With. And, and I can tell you that something that, that even though I'm not affiliated with Mini anymore. Um, nice hoodie you got on, by the way. Pardon me? Nice yeah, I have my mini sweatshirt on now. Um, you know, there, there's some perks. I'm not throwing it out. It was a $90 sweatshirt, damn it. Uh, but I, I can tell you something that many started doing, many financial services started doing last year, which is it's if, if you qualify for a loan, it's the same interest rate for everybody. Yeah, which but, but I'll just throw out the, the caveat there being, a lot of 0% financing deals right now, it's the opposite of that, you know? Well, yes, yes, but I'm, I'm talking, but, but here, was, here was the real key. Um, if you qualified, well, their best rate or the rate that everybody qualified for um, wasn't such a good rate. I mean, I, if I remember correctly, it was like 3.9%, whether you, were, you had a credit score of 850 or whether you had a credit score of 600. And legitimately if you had a credit score of 850 you could probably get 1.69 or 1.9 but you were paying 3.9 because well they had to be able to compensate for those that really shouldn't have qualified for a good rate and that sounds like a whole other video on its own that we can get in depth yeah. about, but, but that's something that some some captive lenders are thinking of doing and some like many are actually doing and and just bring it full circle here i mean so when you go to engage with a dealer, and again, this is what we do day in and day out. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. If you bring up the monthly payment, you're starting to go down this rabbit hole where you're getting further and further away from actually understanding how much money am I about to invest in this vehicle. You, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to ask what the payment is until you know what the total price is. And to get to the total price, they're going to want to have an appointment, want to do this and that and this. Out the door price, see what the dock fees are, negotiate them off. I mean, if that's like a one, two, three steps to follow, mm -hmm. engage with the dealership, ask just, just repeatedly until they give it to you. Ask for the out the door price, the best out the door price you have, see what or the dock some, Or in some cases, they'll never give it to you. And if they don't give it to you, go to another you don't do business with them. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's pulling your hair out, yes. You know, but in this world that we live in, when you're engaging with car dealers, that's a little bit of how you can cut through some of the noise and some of the jargon and the lingo that if you feel comfortable using, you know, you'll, you'll get there a little bit quicker. It's not snap your fingers. I, I probably had 15 different phone calls yesterday with multiple dealerships just doing one deal, but you eventually get to where you need to be. For instance, last weekend when I was helping uh, the customer in Texas, um, and we eventually came to, uh, to a deal with, with a local dealer down there, just with that dealer, it was 31 emails, just with that dealer. Now, I haven't even talked about the, the four, well, actually it was about seven or eight other dealers between other Hyundai and other Honda dealers that I engaged with, so that in order to put a car deal together for this customer, it, it probably didn't require much more than 60 or 70 emails and phone conversations, which I don't know, were time consuming for me, but you know, this is what we get paid to do. If you're a customer, you have to invest that much time in trying to get a deal. I, I can understand why as a customer, you would hate car dealers. Yep. Yeah. Out the door price, doc fee, try and get a car deal. The end of the day, if you're yeah. getting caught up in all that noise, that's one way to approach it. Yes, exactly.